Hi there and welcome to another of the DTA screencasts. So in this session, no surprise, uh, based on the title, we're looking at aggression. Okay, so let's get started. So are these people, when they play, are they being aggressive or assertive? So what we have to do is understand what we mean by the term aggression. So have a look at this clip here and see what you think is being exhibited. Is it aggression or assertion? Okay, so based on that, what do you think? Are you looking at assertion or aggression? Now, the key point here is we've got to understand what aggression is and what assertion is and the difference between those two. So, um, aggression is used to describe forceful behaviour in sport. It is any behaviour that is intended to harm another individual by physical or verbal means. So when you think back to those videos, were they deliberately trying to hurt somebody or was it just them being assertive in the sense of the role that they were given as part of that particular sport? So have a look at these two pictures here. Clearly there is harm or intent there by the individual to, to by verbal means uh, or, or physical means to cause some kind of harm. But in this situation here, is it the same? Well, any form of behavior directed towards the goal of harming or injuring another living being. Are they trying to harm those people in that situation? Probably not, but probably yes up there. Okay, so key point there. So the two types of aggression are the ones we've just referred to. So to define certain types of aggression, we've got to talk about hostile aggression and instrumental aggression or assertion, sometimes known as channeled aggression. And there's the two different types. Hostile aggression, that's the one that's exhibiting the violence and the intent for harm, where instrumental aggression or assertion, someone being assertive, can also be known as channeled aggression, um, is where there is no intent to harm. So, as we just said there, hostile aggression, harm an opponent, inflict injury, and Interestingly, if you've got somebody in your side who's setting out their goal to injure somebody or harm, what do you think the impact is going to be on the team or the individual's performance? Okay, so ordinarily what happens is if someone's being aggressive, then it usually disrupts the cohesion or how well a team is working together alongside the other performers. So it's not actually a good thing. Even though you may dominate the other person uh, that you're trying to harm, it can actually have a negative effect because you might just be focused on that one particular person. So here's a perfect example. Okay, a very famous example there where that person's harm or intent to harm to cause injury then had a negative impact on the rest of the team's performance. Okay, so let's look at the other type then. So this is channeled aggression or assertion. So this is no intent to harm, strictly within the rules of the game or activity or sport. Often involves robust actions to complete the skills successfully and is usually goal directed so it may be towards scoring a try or scoring a basket scoring a run you run aggressively or you run assertively is what we can say it's channeled towards 
that goal, that particular task. So we'll have a look at this fella here and see how his channeled aggression impacts on the performance of the team. there to Alangi um, doing a number on quite a few other internationals and what we've got there is the channeled aggression it's focused on that goal it's not on the intent to harm and there itself is the massive difference isn't it so where does aggression actually come from then is it your instincts is it genetic is it the environment did you learn it is it frustration is it your star sign if that's your thing so what happened to this guy here where did his aggression come from why is he being so aggressive? It really irritates me. South Park would say that red-haired people don't have souls, okay? Because we do. We do have souls, all right? And lately, I've been being called a ginger, a fat ginger, by everybody at school. And it really hurts my feelings. I like it doesn't, but it does really bad. Teachers have souls. I go to church. I'm a Christian. You don't know me. You're not God. <gasps> amazing. Absolutely amazing. So what's caused that guy to be aggressive? And that's the point we've got to try and work out here. Okay. Now, there are three theories that we need to look at. So there's the instinct theory, frustration aggression theory, the fr re uh, revised frustration aggression theory. So we'll just go through those very quickly then. Let's have a look. So initially what we have is the instinct theory. And, and this one turns around and suggests that um, motivation that we have is either sexually or aggressively orientated. Um, but that's, that's quite primitive, isn't it? So what it suggests is that we always have this instinct to be aggressive and it builds up until we can release it in some way. Um, and if you think about it, some way that you could potentially release aggression within sport uh, is known as catharsis. But there is very little research to support this theory. Um, so people don't tend to use it, but it is one that we need to recognize. So it's an instinct. It's inside you already. Frustration maybe but aggression yes okay so whether you agree or disagree with that one is entirely up to you just have a thought on that and then there's the social learning theory and we've looked at these before but bandura has done a lot of work on social learning he turns around and says that we learn by observation so as it says here aggression is a behavior that we learn by observing others and the Bobo doll is the experiment that was carried out um, very famously by Bandura. So the kids watched other people beating up this giant doll and acting out and, and using physical harm. And then after a while, they were put into the same room and they exhibited the same types of aggression. They even moved it further and, and used different weapons, as you can see down here. No one actually used that during the experiment, but this kid picked it up. So they're saying that observing aggression will allow you to then become more aggressive. So what do you think to that? Are we purely aggressive because of what we see? So is it our environment? Okay, and then there is the frustration aggression hypothesis. And it's quite an interesting one, this. So this was proposed in 1939. A frustration is developed uh, when we need to achieve a goal, but this is blocked in some way. 
So then occurs um, through it may be an environmental situation. You may be defeated or uh, being beaten by a good opponent. It might be poor officials that triggers the aggressive behavior. You're getting frustrated at what's happening around you within your environment. But if your aggressive, aggressive act, say hitting the ball really, really hard, is successful, then this, this frustration is uh, apparently released in this cathartic release. But if aggression fails and the result is punished, more frustration would then become, and this guy was very, very famous, Macaro, for becoming frustrated uh, and then um, aggressive whilst playing. Okay, so let's just walk that through. First of all, you've got a drive towards a particular goal some kind of obstacle to call to that goal so that could be as i said the opponent it could be a decision something like that is going to then cause frustration and then directly from that frustration according to this theory it says you will be aggressive okay and then the two pathways after that are either success therefore we get a catharsis or punishment and therefore we get more frustration it's just going to build up and build up all right, so that's the frustration aggression theory. So what's the flaw in this theory? Pause the screencast, have a look and see where you think the flaw is. Okay, so I'm gonna um, just move on. I'm not gonna identify it straight away and see if you can work it out. Now, um, there is the revised frustration aggression theory. And this one, very simply, is a revision of the previous one. So. Now what it does, it takes into account that there are times when you can control the frustration. You don't resort to violence. So if we just take it back, so you have the drive, the obstacle, and then the frustration, but it doesn't say that frustration will always end in aggression. It's suggesting that frustration can sometimes be controlled and therefore you can move on or beyond, which is the revision to the frustration aggression theory. Okay, it's quite an interesting variant on that. All right, and then the last one that we need to look at is this one here, is the aggressive cue hypothesis. And this one basically turns around and says that when we're, um, when we're in a, a particular state such as frustration, what it does, it causes arousal, not aggression, not directly anyway. It can increase your arousal if you get frustrated but you're more likely to produce excuse me, aggressive responses. But it doesn't say that there is a direct link between frustration and then aggression. In between them, it says that there is um, arousal. So frustration can cause heightened levels of arousal, and that might be somatic or cognitive arousal. And therefore, aggression may come from that. It may, though. All right, so as before, you may get success and then catharsis, or you may get punishment. But again, increasing arousal itself is insufficient to lead directly to aggression, uh, aggressive behavior, unless the cues in the environment, hence the name, the cue hypothesis. Okay, so one of the cues might be, if um, within the sport, it may be a physical tackle that's gonna cause the potential arousal, then aggression. Or it might be being goaded by the audience. Again, so frustration, then arousal on their own, not necessarily going to cause aggression, but then if there are these particular cues, if you've got these people screaming and shouting at you, then you may become aggressive. Or, same before, frustration, arousal, and then the cue here of somebody hitting you really, really hard, that then may cause aggression. So it's about the cue that's in the process as opposed to just the frustration and then the arousal. Okay, so the best thing to do then is to go back over the screencast, make sure you've got the relevant points on each one of the different sections, identifying first of all what aggression is and the two different types, and then the, uh, the different theories that are linked to aggression and then frustration as well. Okay, thanks very much. Speak to you soon.